Uh, thanks, Sabal. Uh, hi, and welcome everyone to this uh, microconference. I will do the first session about uh, the Coconut Secure VM service module, which is only scheduled for 10 minutes because we have to we have a lengthy uh, off tomorrow. So any discussion that we get finished today, we can finish tomorrow in the in the buff. Um, so let's get started. Um, so the Coconut SVSM, what is the state of the project? Um, it was announced earlier this year, and currently uh, it can it can boot a Linux guest at VMPL2 with uh, on AMD SCV SMP hardware. It has core protocol support. It has, it's, it's getting CPL3 support. What we have so far is Elf loader uh, file system, basic support for tasks, uh, basic support for virtual memory management. Um, we we run with we support lots of checkers. We support Rust format. We support um, Clippy, we, we actually enforce both of those. So same as unit tests, we enforce those. We, are, we can run with uh, Miri for Rust safety checks. And we even recently gained, uh, gained fuzzing support for certain um, parts of the code, which is currently is around 12,000 lines, a couple more than 12,000 lines of Rust code. Um, it's currently the SVSM. Um, but this is about the future. So, what is what is the roadmap? The current most important thing for the SVSM, which we want to achieve, and what we are, what has the highest, highest the highest priority is getting CPL3 support running, and run a VTPM in CPL3. That involves some iteration over the syscall design and some more parts in the SVSM kernel part. Um, but we are getting there. Um, and after that, um, there are some cleanup work to be done. Um, for example, getting rid of the direct map. Coconut still uses a, uses a direct map, which is not compatible with its claim that it's um, that it puts a focus on, on isolation. Though there is some rework um, needed to get rid of that. Um, more on that later. Uh, we we also need a persistence layer in the in the SVSM, which is also one of the very next thing, things after we have VTPM, um, because uh, because the VTPM wants to needs to store its state somewhere and reload it after, after a reboot, so we need persistence. Um, and another important part is support booting via the IGVM format. Um, we can discuss that during the buff. It's basically the, who has heard of IGVM or who has not heard of, who has not heard of IGVM? <coughs> IGVM is a, is, a, is a file format defined, defined by Microsoft, which basically allows to um, describe the initial state of a, of a confidential virtual machine. Um, though it, des it describes the initial memory state, it describes the initial register state, um, so that a uh, hypervisor can use the file to set up a confidential VM, and, uh, and the customer can use the file to uh, calculate the expected launch measurement. Yeah, um, what does IGVM stand for? I have to look it up, I forgot, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Integrated guess, I don't know. I have to look it up. Um, right, um, the benefit of IGVM is that it also uh, has information in it where to put certain uh, hypervisor information like uh, ACPI tables, the MADT table, or the memory map, and that is very, very compelling because that that gives us that gives the SVSM um, a unified hypervisor interface because it needs some information from the hypervisor which it currently gets from QMU via firmware config, and which we have to re-implement for other hypervisors. And with IGBM, we have all of that for all hypervisors that implement IGBM. So that's also one of the next things to implement. Um, actually, work on that has already started. But um, so, what are what are the open problems of um, that we need to solve, or that we want to discuss here, or that I want to see discussed? We can discuss other problems too. Um, I already mentioned uh, persistence. The design for that is not yet set. Do we want to do we do we want to use a dedicated block device? Do we want to use something else like an object store or something? I don't know. We need encryption and integrity protection, of course, because every external storage is, is untrusted. Um, but for encryption, we need a, we need to get a key into the SVSM, which is only known to the guest and the guest owner. So next problem. And we also need an access permission model to make sure that the TPM can only access the TPM state and other parts can only access their state. So this is our problem that need to be solved for the for the persistency layer. And besides that, there's also a deployment question. How do we deploy the, the persistent state for the SVSM? One idea I had, which we can discuss, is to store it as a separate file on the EFI partition of the disk image that we deploy. Um, but there might be other better options. We can discuss that. 
Um, memory management, I already mentioned that I want to get rid of the uh, direct map. Um, this requires some ch more changes to the underlying code base, um, especially especially to the to the uh, allocator and to the pa uh, page management that is currently um, implemented. Um, speaking of the of the allocator, there are some some other implications because um, the design of the coconut SVSM involves uh, partitioning of the virtual address space, not just between user and kernel, but also but uh, there is a user part, there is a per task kernel space, there is a per CPU space even, so, so we don't use GS for per CPU data, we, we, have a, we, we do that via the page tables, and we have a global, a global shared part of the page table, <coughs> and or of the, of the virtual address space, and in theory we can allocate from um, each of this um, part, so we need to solve the question where we want to actually do, the, do allocations from. Um, another big issue, I think, are, are our usage of Rust smart pointers. Um, so currently we use the built-in Rust smart pointers, I think RC, ARC, and Box. Um, problem is that they, that they panic on allocation failure, which is certainly not something we want, because it makes the project unreliable um, once we run, once we, uh, run out, of, out of memory. So, um, so we need smart pointers which can fail by returning an, an error and which can use different backend allocators. Different backend allocators because we might need to allocate from different parts of the address space. Like, like a per CPU allocation or, or per task allocation or a global shared allocation, for example. Um, apparently all of this is already implemented in Rust smart pointers, but for that we need Rust unstable. And we just switched away from unstable Rust for reasons um, to stable Rust. So we don't have it from Rust. So, and it's not clear when when these when these APIs from Rust will become stable. So, um, yeah, I think we need to implement our own smart pointers for the time being and switch over to the Rust ones once they become stable. <coughs> Governance, um, interesting topic, which we raised a couple of times already, also in the SVSM Devil calls. Um, it's an ongoing discussion. So far, I'm the only maintainer, which is not a, not, not, not a perfect situation. Um, so the goal is to get more top level maintainers involved um, and increase the bus factor of the coconut SVSM. Um, but we need to discuss how to, how to get there. Um, and another list of possible next steps or other use cases for the SVSM, what can be, what can we implement or what can be done with the SVSM and um, we can Talk about live migration. Uh, we can talk about a UEFI variable store to, uh, in the SVSM. Uh, about epic em about epic emulation and secure IRQ injection. Um, support for more TE ar architectures besides uh, AMD, SCB, SMP, um, and more device emulations and implementing a, a full paravisor even um, to run non-Linux operating systems or non-enlightened operating systems. Um, you see SVSM not, not as an SVSM for an OS, but also for um, as a platform for secure service VMs that don't run an, an, an OS on top, but that provide secure services to other uh, VMs, um, or any other cool idea that we can discuss or that you can bring up during the discussion. Um, since we have not much time today, there is an SVSM booth tomorrow um, at 12.15 in exactly this room. So. Um, if you're interested, you can you are invited to join that. Um, and with that, I'm at the end of my presentation, and we'll open the audience or the time for discussion. We have, I think, five minutes, four minutes left. The rest is in the buff tomorrow. I just want to touch this thing. Um, <laughs> I do have one question. This might be like way beyond the scope of five minutes or not, but. You mentioned smart pointers, and one thing I've been a little bit curious about with the SVSM lately is how shared memory and the Rust ownership model uh, can play nicely together. Like Rust thinks that it has, you know, exclusive access or whatever to a page, but in fact, that page is shared with the host. Uh, how do we reconcile these things? And do you think this is a place where having our own smart pointer might be able to help understand if a page is shared or if it is shared, what, what is happening to that page? 
I'm not the most experienced Rust developer, but um, I think it's difficult to to enforce these ownership things with sh host shared memory because um, Rust has no way of tracking host ownership, right? Well, we can, yeah. Maybe there 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 is a way to tell, to tell that this page is shared with the with with the host, so there there is an owner for it. Um, but. Yeah, I, I failed to come up with a with, with a good suggest uh, with a good suggestion here. So, it's it's where we get into the depths of unsafe rust, I guess. So, predictable launch measurements. I hope you get that with the with with, with the IGBM. So. <laughs> 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 so yeah, um, that's actually the, the promise of IGVM that you take the file, it contains all your initial state. You take it, you calculate your launch, your expected launch measurement, and you can compare it to the launch measurement you actually get and see if you if the hypervisor lo loaded your IGVM file correctly. Cross hypervisor. That's that's the idea. Yeah. Once you're able to build a IGVM file that actually works cross hypervisor, but that's another problem. Uh, can you talk about some of the problems that you saw with direct map memory? Uh, yeah, so um, how, Coco, how, uh, how Coconut was, was initially written is that it has some dedicated memory in, in, in guest mode and like 256 megabyte currently, and that is basically there's basically a direct mapping of that and a, di a direct offset mapping in the SVSM to basically allocate memory from that SVSM owned part of the of the, of the memory space. Now the SVSM wants to isolate between CPUs between tasks, and we currently do that because we have per CPU mappings, but everything that's mapped in the per CPU space is still mapped in the in the direct map, so accessible by everyone. And we want to have it unmapped for everyone, or we don't even have it mapped for everyone. We want to allocate a page and map it then to whichever part of the address space um, it is it is allocated to. So global shared or per CPU, and it and that it's this page is then not mapped to anything else. So that's that's what we want to do to fulfill, or that what I propose to do to fulfill the isolation promise of that the SVSM gives that the memory is actually isolated within the SVSM itself. And I think with that, yeah, maybe time for one sh last short question. No short question. No short question. Okay, then if you have anything, you can you're invited to the buff tomorrow. So thanks and have fun. Yeah.